Hi, our guest today is Charlie Scaff. Charlie's running for the one-year unexpired Board of uh, Assessor seat in the April 4th town election. Welcome, Charlie. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. So we're going to ask you the standard question we ask everybody. Why are you running for Assessor? Well, I've been in town government probably almost all my life since I was a uh, junior in high school. Really? Uh, that long? Yeah, I uh, started working uh, for David I. Davin. At the school at system. At the school system. And I started there, and from there I went to the town hall, the other town buildings. Retired three and a half years ago after 42 years of uh, full-time service. I've been in, uh, I've ran different elections, made a few, lost a few. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, enjoyed everything uh, that I've done so far. Uh, I've done a lot of volunteer work for the town. Uh, at the senior center and uh, high school and wherever I can help out. And I just like working for the town government, enjoy the people. Wow. That long, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess you could be called the townie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did a lot of different capacities, too. You know, I met a lot of nice people. So what specifically, do you, anything specific you have in your mind as an assessor? Any major issues that you... Uh, I was going to run a couple years ago if uh, CM uh, decided he wasn't going to run and he wanted to do another term and out of respect, I wouldn't run against him. Mm. <coughs> Unfortunately, he passed away yeah, last year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I figured I'd give it a shot. It's an open seat. Yep. And uh, like I said, it's, uh, you know, people have a choice. You know? Josh is a great guy. I had him uh, when I was driving uh, school bus. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> when he was in a started school. <laughs> you know, comes from a great family. Well, mm. I wish him the best of luck. Oh, yeah. Well, everybody <laughs> knows you as well. Yeah, so. right. Yeah. Um, do you have any, well, do you think you need any special, special qualifications to be on the board? Yes, you do. And uh, I've uh, talked to the uh, Department of Revenue. Uh, I spoke to, I believe her name was uh, Donna Quinn. Yep. And uh, she explained to me the whole thing. I, uh, I've been studying the 101. Yeah, there is a class mm -hmm. you have There's to take. There's a class, right. Right. And she says, keep studying that. And if I get elected, I have two years to uh, take the test. And she says not to rush because they're changing it. <laughs> they are. Yes. Uh, she, by the end of the year, She's uh, supposed to be online because I guess there's a lot of old stuff that they don't use and there's some new stuff. Well, the test is online. I didn't know that they're going to put the course online. Yeah, because they made a lot of changes and they're upgrading it. So uh, <coughs> that, that's, a, that's a new thing. She also told me to uh, go to any course I could that they have available. They have three or four a year scattered throughout the state. Yep. And she says they're very really good. Uh, yeah. She says you'll enjoy them, uh, and you meet a lot of nice people. A lot of math in them, though. Yeah. Oh I don't no. know if you realize I'm an assessor in Menden now. Yes, so. I heard that. Yeah. So uh, I'm actually taking all those courses uh -huh. right now, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of math in there. Yeah. But, they, you know, it's interesting. I was, uh, like I said, I've been studying up instead of watching TV, go on the computer because everything's online. Right. And uh, it's very, very interesting. There's a lot of well, things that... You, did, you, you didn't know, yep. you know? No, most people, I have to tell you, until I got on, mm -hmm. you know, I was always confused. Like, I always thought, gee, if my neighbor has the same house I do, mm -hmm. and, and it, he sells for 50 grand less, mm -hmm. I can go in and get my taxes reduced, yeah. and that's not it no, at yeah, all. That's the way yeah. it works. Because it's, it's... It's everybody in town that right, has a house like, like yours. As I'm learning, it's mass appraisal, not mm -hmm. Massachusetts appraisal, but mass like lots of right. appraisals. So you're really comparing, like, every ranch in the town or in a neighborhood Correct. and then in the town. And the town doesn't have any, it's a turn of revenue is the one that checks it so you cannot cheat. It's not, right. uh, you know, that right. you well, know someone. <laughs> plus the, the, uh, the actual full-time assessor staff, the four mm -hmm. people, right. do 90% of the work. Right. And the board just mm -hmm. kind of uh, uh, approves like the abatements mm -hmm. and things like that. But, but I think knowing the town as long as you have is, uh, might be an asset, don't you? Yes. Uh, You've watched the town really grow and get built up. I have. I used to know everybody at one time, <laughs> and uh, it's amazing. I was up to high school to see Kyle uh, Tuttle, yeah. and I don't think I know four 
teachers in the whole school. <laughs> and I worked there for, uh, what, 20-something years. Well, it's funny. My, my kids are uh, 22, 24, and 26. Mm -hmm. And I don't recognize the names of any of the teachers mm -hmm. in the Menden Upton school system mm -hmm. anymore. Most of them have retired that, that my kids had. Yeah. And, y and y we're talking, in, my, in the case of my kids, like, you know, eight mm -hmm. years out. <laughs> well, I've only been out of the town hall for three and a half years. And, and there's people there, there. There's people there that <coughs> I have to remember their names because they knew people that you know I, that came in. Yep. As well, the secretary. good news is you can remember their names. Well, <laughs> 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 as long as they got an ape tag on their there desk. There you go. That, that's exactly <laughs> the case. So, if, have, have you met with Jen Sklar, the assessor, and her yes, staff? Yes, I did. I went and introduced myself uh, about a month ago, and she's viewed, by the way, just so you know. Mm -hmm. Outside of Milford, mm -hmm. she's viewed as one of the most talented assessors in the area. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Milford people realize that. Uh, she has a very great reputation around the state. I was told that, and I could tell by talking to her. Yep. And uh, I spoke to Priscilla, because she was top-notch, too. Well, she Priscilla helped bring Jen in. Yeah. So, and Priscilla uh, Hogan, who's yeah. retired. Yeah. And I also uh, was in Medway, and I went by, and I met the... Uh, Assessor there. She's been there for two years, and she's also on the board in Franklin. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You have a lot of people who are who work for a town as an assessor, mm -hmm. and then are on the board in the town they live yeah. in. I, I didn't realize that. My uncle used to be the assessor up in up uh, Auburn. He was there for a long, so long time. So it's in the so it's in the blood. Well, politics is. I think I've always been involved in politics. Uh, I remember helping. Uh, Senator Bernazzi, oh, yeah, when, he was oh. when he was running for representative, because back then Milford was in, was in Grafton, Grafton, Westboro. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It was well, a lot bigger. Well, he was he was the state rep then. Then yeah. he became senator. Yeah. Yeah. He's top drawer. Yeah. Top drawer. And then uh, I, it's funny because I have a hard time picturing Milford Town Hall without mm. you in it, <laughs> even though I know you you've been right. gone a couple of years. Yeah. It, it doesn't seem the same. Mm. Oh, well, like I say, I always try to give everything 110%. Uh, even though I'm on the Council on Aging, but even before I was on the Council of Aging, I always helped out down there, volunteering with the lunches. I would take them on trips. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, like I said, I did drive school bus, so I didn't keep up my school bus license, but I have the commercial driver's license and stuff, so i take them on the trips and everything. And oh, wow. So if I wanted to go to the airport, I'd give you a call and you'd take me here. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that before, too. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean. Assessor, chauffeur. Uh, I mean. Since, since, as you said, the assessor's work is really governed by the uh, state the, the State Department uh, of Revenue. Revenue. Do you have any kind of goals that you'd like to, to do on there? Um, Actually. Or, or just learning? It's a learning experience. The first year, I would just learn because watch and learn right and that's how you learn you know I'm not gonna go in there the first week and uh, act like I know everything it's often been said it takes a whole <laughs> term first three-year term yep. to learn <coughs> position right right you know I'm, I do know a little bit by reading up uh, but you live in the town and you're a taxpayer right. so at least you know about that yeah well you know the town that's, and I well that's we, got, we got the split tax rate I was gonna ask you what do you think of the split tax rate I uh, to be honest with you, we've had it for so long, uh, I think everyone's used to it. <laughs> well, it does benefit the homeowner. It does. I don't it does. think it'll ever go, I don't think it'll ever go away. Either. Well, well, you never know. It's, it's awfully hard to suddenly t tell a resident yeah. that their gonna their property taxes are going to go up right. uh, 40 or 50 percent because you're discounting them right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So I could and be. the other thing, I don't think they realize you have it's, well, Melford's got uh, quarterly. Yep. They do uh, twice a year and yep. uh, quarterly. Melford's quarterly, which yeah. is probably a lot better. Yeah. And uh, your July bill is actually estimated. estimated estimated from the year before. Four. And then your next bill on December 31st would be your actual bill. Yeah. And because uh, some people say, well, gee, I'll come my same year. I'll come I'm paying different. I'll come it's more or less, uh, you know. And then again, it all depends if you got a single family, a duplex, multi-family. A all, lot of people they're don't all tax different. Yeah, well, a lot of people don't understand that the tax, the, the crop two and a half, mm -hmm. is relative to the town 
not your individual. Not no, your individual. Right. And they always try and attach yeah. it to the individual tax. And you can't go over the two and a half. Right. So you have right. a two and a half profit, right. and which means the whole so levy limit can, the levy limit right. in the town can only go right. up two and a half percent. Right. Oh, you have to ask for an override. Well, which Milford has never ever no, done. No, they never they will. Never I don't will. know. No, they no Milford's a, Milford's you don't need to though. With Milford's in one of the best shaped town in Massachusetts. Well, with the, with the business tax Absolutely. base you have, especially with you know mm -hmm. the the commercial mm -hmm. uh, around Fortune Boulevard yeah. and 495, you'll never need one. No, you're lu you're so lucky here. Well, yeah. but they were well. They're, Milford's a well managed town. It would have even been better if the casino was here. I think the people. Do you, know, do you know what's interesting? Yeah. I was actually talking yeah. to somebody uh, the other day about yeah. that. The casino would be up and running right now if mm -hmm. it had been approved. Right. Yeah, pretty close. The to schedule. It. The schedule yeah. called for it to be active by this year. Because yeah, I was, I've been down by there, and because uh, I've been going around different areas of town. Yeah. And seeing people knocking on doors, and I couldn't believe the construction going on there, and that's only for the. The concrete. Uh, concrete. Plant and the granite that, quarry. And then they said they're trying to get that uh, 40B mm -hmm. up on top where the casino was right. going to go. And they got that one entrance that's going to be brutal back Oh, there. it's going to be. I think that's been stalled pretty well. I mean, the, nobody's talking, but I mean, uh, they've got a huge sewer hurdle to over yeah. overcome. Mm -hmm. and, and somebody told me the, to, to make the sewer line go to the nearest pumping station at our mm -hmm. Fortune Boulevard, you're talking almost a 20-foot cut through solid granite oh, to get a gravity yeah. line down wow. there. Because oh, that's all, you know, yeah. a rock up there. Mm -hmm. And 20 feet down, I mean, look at what they're doing at the granite quarry over there. I was, I was impressed going by there. It's I mean, uh, he's taking that thing down 30, 40 feet yeah. at the entrance. But can you imagine trying to blast a mm -hmm. channel for, for a mile <laughs> or two <laughs> through, you know, 20 feet down through solid granite just to put a sewer line? Yeah. I don't know how they can build that. Build that. Yeah. I, I really don't. Be, it will be very difficult. Now mm -hmm. they, I mean, there is a possibility of having an on-site wastewater treatment nope. facility. It's all granite. No, no, it's all. Uh, they can. There's. There's. They can put in a. They don't. They have, must have had a plan when they had got the, a, when the uh, uh, casino was going to be going in. They must have had a plan. The casino had the money to pay for it. Yeah. This guy. This guy didn't realize Zane Ridge is private, mm -hmm. and he just wanted to run a line across the street to Zane Ridge's uh, pumping station. That'll never happen because they don't want it. <laughs> it. Well, it's private. Yeah. And he, they did the walkthrough last summer, <coughs> and 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 I just remember they said, you, you can't go there. That's private. And the look on the guy's face mm -hmm. was like, ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it'll take it'll take nuclear weapons to <laughs> open that <laughs> open that ground up. So I don't I don't I don't know uh, uh, about that, but I mean I I think the fact you grew up in the town and you've mm -hmm. seen the the various housing developments right. come is kind of an asset. Yeah. So just eyeballing a house, you know. Uh, I know it's really valuable if somebody says, you know, uh, you give a street address and somebody says, who's, who's house? Right. And then you go, so-and-so's uncle, and you go, yeah. oh, I know that house. Yeah. And then you're able to, to judge it, where, whereas in a, in a newer community, yeah. it, it's, it, it's hard. It was funny because last week I was up in Jones Circle area, yep. and I knocked on one of the doors, and the girl comes in, and she says, I know you. You were my bus driver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, you know. Well, it's it, it's it, it is interesting because it, the the thing I think is interesting. I'm on the board of health, so mm -hmm. every once in a while we have we have uh, septic systems or something yeah. like that to approve, and they'll say the address is such and mm -hmm. such, and it's nice to know. Oh, that's across from the Joneses' mm -hmm. house, and oh yeah, I know that. Right. There's a lot of wetlands there, so mm -hmm. where is it at? You know, and, and so those are things you bring to the table right. that a lot of people can't bring to the mm -hmm. table, and I think that's a critical a critical piece of information yeah. that the history. Well, actually, Milford don't have much more land to develop. Yeah. <laughs> no, the last the last piece I know of on Bear Hill, um, uh, Dominic's Dominic uh, Afonso is about to yeah. go. I think it's in March before the mm -hmm. planning board right. to put up another condo development, yeah. and that's really the last big residential mm -hmm. piece of land left. Yeah, other than uh, and they just proved that uh, not Home Goods, it's the uh, Restaurant Depot down on Restaurant uh, Depot. But the rest of uh, that is going to be, be office buildings. Right. So that's going to be pretty well developed down there. That's the before town. the planning board in uh, in March as well, mm -hmm. and they'll get going on that. Right. And then um, they want to build a gas station across the street from mm -hmm. that at the bottom of the Vietnam trails. Yep. Yep. Um, they want to build a little gas station convenience mm -hmm. store. So that little area is getting developed. Yep. And then what are you really left with is just where Archer Rubber was. And, yeah. and that's going to be, I'll tell you, 
going to be a difficult place to build because you're right on top of the Charles River. Well, you're on top of the Charles River. You got a, you got what they call a brownfield site because mm. God knows what's what was in that. Oh bucket. man, yeah. I mean, they're they're reclaiming some of the boards right now, mm. and I'm going, what is soaked into those boards? Yeah. The only well, thing I I would think would go there would be nice would be like a national park or something like that. Well, if it's a brownfield, they're going to have to cover it. Mm. Or remove the soil. Well, they can either remove the soil, but depending upon how long it's been a brownfield, they may not be able to remove the soil. And then the, pro then the problem is, is, as Charlie said, you've got the Charles River running through, and it's right. been covered over. And now with that water, oh, with that, water, that, yep. that, that new water uh, act there, oh, the yeah. Milford is the beginning, I believe, of the Charles River. Yes, and Milford's going to be hit. Milford's gonna got all that stuff. Right. All that <laughs> <was> <laughs> starts in Hopkins, starts <laughs> in Hopkinton, but really most of it's in Milford yeah. first. So Which people people in Boston don't think of that, you uh, know. You go to Cambridge and you see this great thing, or you watch the head of the Charles Regatta up there some October. I'm sure once the state comes in there with all their rules and regulations, there's going to be uh, not too much yeah. more in there. Well, I mean, it's <laughs> that's probably one of the most m most impacting decisions mm -hmm. and actions the state's taken. I mm -hmm. mean, it has dramatic financial in impact. Yeah. Well, it's actually the, it's actually the EPA. Not the state, and and the last thing I heard from the town officials is they're hoping Trump gets a kill. <laughs> well, he's <laughs> just time killed he one there. today. He just mm -hmm. killed one today. Mm -hmm. But but uh, the EPA, and I think it's on a Water uh, Rivers Act or mm -hmm. something like that, which uh, the EPA had control over anything that had water in it, even mm -hmm. a mud puddle. Yeah. yeah, and he's just killed that one. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. I was going to say, you know, you get on the board of assessors mm -hmm. in a year. You won't be saying single-family houses. You'll be going 101s. Mm -hmm. One, mm -hmm. 100 is uh, is residential. All right. Uh, I think 300 is commercial. Uh -huh. and you start uh, you start going to a meeting and people are going, oh, 101s and 102s, yeah. and you're sitting there going, what the heck? Yeah, because <laughs> I think it was chapter 49 and uh, section 40, because I was reading the chapters too. Well, I actually have an exam on Friday, and uh -huh. I got I got to remember there's. Uh, Springfield uh, versus uh, Bettigold versus Springfield mm -hmm. and Sudbury are the two decisions that led to 100% valuation mm -hmm. and letting the Department of Revenue take charge of things. So I got to keep these in my head. You'll have that for 101. But it, I tell you, it's very interesting. Oh, I, I'm yeah, actually, I'm, I'm actually enjoying it. It's a little bit. You different. learn stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you learn how. I, what I learned is how little leeway a town has mm -hmm. to do anything. Yeah, you can't. Like I said, the Department of Revenue is the one that. Uh, and you got to work closely with the, uh, before you even do the tax rate, you got to work closely with the selectmen, the uh, finance committee, uh, Zach finance Taylor. department. Right now. Well, you have to look at the recap sheet. There's all kinds uh, of, you know, the things. accountant and everything, you know. Yep. And you got to make sure you get it done by a certain date. Right. Because if you don't. You don't get to set your tax rate. It's going to cost the town a lot in interest, the money they're losing. <laughs> well, it, it's always been a joke in Minden and, uh, and Upton mm. uh, when I was a selectman right. and a school committee is, is if you don't set your tax rate mm -hmm. when you have to set it, then you have to borrow money to run the town. Mm -hmm. So now instead of having that, you have interest on the loan to run right. it. So uh, uh, it, it gets really expensive. Now, Milford wouldn't have that problem because mm -hmm. you have some cash that right. you could use, mm -hmm. but a town that doesn't have that kind of reserve. Yeah. Well, the, th the thing I just learned in class mm -hmm. recently was if you have a town that doesn't have a lot of money, and every, it used to be every three years you had to recertify all the values. Right. Now it's just changed every five years. But if you have a town that doesn't want to put the money away, mm -hmm. pay for that. Right. The Department of Revenue will come in and make you do it, and they'll take the money out of your state aid money. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you're going to lose either way. <laughs> and then, yeah. uh, then, there's, then there's a thing like Menden for, I don't know if Menden still gets it. This goes back a couple years, is uh, overburden aid. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, if Menden gets overburdened. Well, who knows? Yeah. I mean, but that's... I don't think they give that out anymore. Yeah. Uh, they don't? I don't know. Because it shows up on the, yeah. on the budget sheet in, in Menden. Or, in but as far as, uh, like, commercial now, actually, Milford's running out of room for uh, any big... You're not kidding? ...commercial. I was in uh, Marlboro, 495, going towards Northboro. They're really developing over there. I don't know if you've been down there. Yep. It's unbelievable. They have a master there's, plan in Marlboro here like, to that. There's like a half a mile stretch of oh, construction yeah. going on there for commercial. Oh, yeah. They did something interesting in Marlboro. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, they did a master plan. And most mm -hmm. master plans are, what do we want to see in town to make it look nice? Mm -hmm. Or what kind of housing? Marlboro said, what do we need to keep the tax rate from going up? Mm -hmm. And then they came back and said, we need this much industry, this many square feet of commercial. Mm -hmm. 
It'd be nice to have housing, but they just looked right. at those two and said, we need to increase this to keep the tax rate down. And then they sat and said, what do we need to do with all the laws in town to make them easier to get that there? And their whole master plan was how to do that, keep the tax rate down. So when you see all that business industry mm -hmm. going, they made a plan to do that. Yeah, they're a little bit different too because they're considered a city. Right. So they're, they're all you know, town and city. Right, they uh, have the city council right, and the mayor. Yeah. <coughs> um, you know, where, where Milford is still a town. Right. Framingham is known as the uh, biggest little, uh, the, the biggest town in, I think, the country mm -hmm. uh, that never I was a city. I remember back in the 60s, to be downtown, it was unbelievable. You, you couldn't walk on Main Street. Oh, in, in, in Milford. In Milford. So you, yeah, now well, it's a ghost change. town. Well, the malls and the uh, shopping plazas uh, killed it. Well, there's... Uh, I, I really, I personally believe that, mm -hmm. that that can be brought back if there's some restaurants and businesses. Well, brought yeah, it's a pack until parking's bad. Parking. Well, the, the selectmen actually uh, this week mm -hmm. um, took a look at forming an economic development committee just for downtown. Mm -hmm. Part of the problem is you can't really put a restaurant with a liquor license downtown That's because the there's a church every 500 right. feet. <laughs> and you, you can't put... Like the uh, the two women that uh, that have the microbrewery, mm -hmm. yeah, they couldn't find a place. They wanted to go on Main Street, yeah. and they couldn't because yeah. everywhere you look, there's, there's I don't know what the the, the mm -hmm. how many feet of right. five hundred, I think five hundred feet. You got to yeah, be unless you grandfathered in, right? But what they found right. was there's not any room right. to put the. They wanted a, uh, just a brewery with a tasting room. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do it on Main Street. They're all the way off up uh, uh, yeah. off of Birch Street on Industrial Road. Yeah, and it's funny though. You, you know, you can't get a liquor license. Or be on wine license, but yet the church can apply for a one-day license. Right, and get it. <laughs> right. Get it. <laughs> well, don't forget now in in, in uh, fall of 2018, any store on Main Street uh, uh, can apply for a marijuana license mm -hmm. to sell marijuana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, which is horrible when you think about it. Oh man. And the it's zoning that's proposed by the planning board. Um, well, says you can have it on on Main Street with a special permit from mm -hmm. the planning board. Well, the good the, there is some good news because then there'll be snack shops every <laughs> other store. <laughs> I think the only way they can do the parking without taking any land is to put up a parking garage. Well, they did that down and in. Uh, you make a three-story parking garage with the a roof, and you don't have to worry about. But, but the, the state the state official um, that came in, the head of economic mm -hmm. development for the state, came in in early February to Milford and said, don't do that because they all fall down after 20 years and you're stuck with uh, it. I'm sure that if it's built right, because in Boston, that's all they have. But Marlboro built one about yeah. 20 years ago yeah. right in their downtown. Because right. it's funny, because um, at that meeting, Larry mm -hmm. Duncan, the, the, the planner, mm -hmm. said, well, we've got over 540 spaces downtown. And Chris Moran of the FinCom, who, of course, his family right. owns Moran's Photography, right. said, that may be, Larry, but my customers can never find one right. when they need it. Right, that's yeah. exactly. And, well, and something that's has to be done about yeah. parking, without question. Yeah. I mean, they have, they've been cracking down lately because I've been uh, I've seen the uh, police tagging them. Yeah. But you got to if it's two hours, the cop has to make sure it's two hours, so they'll right. mark your tires, they'll time it, because okay. you can't call up. So that car's been there for two and a half hours. No, they they chalk the tire yeah. and they just look at it when they right. walk up and down. At least you still have beat cops here. Yeah, right. But anyway, we we, we only got a couple of minutes mm -hmm. left. Let's get let's get back to assessor. Sure. This is a, a chance for you, mm -hmm. without a lot of hard questions from mm -hmm. us, to really talk to the voters and mm -hmm. say uh, why they should elect you assessor. Why, so yeah. so again, you why know, should they elect you? Why? Uh, well, like I say, I've always been in town government. I've been on other boards. Uh, the two boards that presently I'm uh, vice chairman. I've been there three years, vice chairman. Uh, Two years. Of uh, which one? On the Council on Aging. Okay. And when I was on the Vernon Grove, I was on there for three years, and I was chairman too. And I've always gave 110 uh, percent. You can ask anybody that I've worked with on any of the boards. Uh, I was, a, you know, not patting myself on the back, but I would help anybody out, and I would, whatever it was, whatever it took, I would do it. <coughs> always engaged, always uh, there. Yeah, I like to be busy, and I never ask anyone to do anything if I can't do it. Mm. That's one thing. Even when I was working, I wouldn't ask you to do something that I wouldn't do. Mm. That's the way I am. 
Uh, well, that's a good way to be. No, that's the way I was brought up. See, I'm brought up from the old school where I handshake. <laughs> that's the deal. Okay? Yeah, oh yeah. My word, it, it, if it, I tell you something, my word is usually pretty good. It, it, it's funny because I get yelled at by people because I do business on handshakes with mm -hmm. people. You know, I, I renovated a house uh, on a handshake now, with yeah. a guy. Well, see, nowadays you need a lawyer next to you. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's, it's a, it, but, you know, I, I grew up in the same era where, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a handshake, that's it. My word's mm -hmm. my bond. If right. I tell you this is, gonna, mm -hmm. this is what we're going to do, we're going to do. Right. And I, like I say, I can get along with almost anybody. Well, I uh, have trouble getting along with Kevin, but yeah. other than that. <laughs> <laughs> You're not alone. We may not always agree. <laughs> right. But well, that's called democracy. Well, you know, if everybody, if everybody agreed with everybody, uh, you know, something would be wrong. <laughs> People don't understand that. That's a very good, a very good point. It's, it's important to have that debate. It's mm -hmm. important for you to have a different idea mm -hmm. than I do because right. that's, what, that's what solutions mm -hmm. come from. It is. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway... Um, our time's almost up, so mm -hmm. we'd like to thank you for coming. I, you and know. we wish you a lot of luck in the April 4th election. Absolutely. I, I thank Absolutely. you guys. And, and uh, uh, thanks for being here. Yeah. Thank you.